Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem unique length three palindromic subsequences. This is a problem from today's leak code contest. So we are given a string S. We want to return the number of unique palindromes only of length three that could be a subsequence of S. Not necessarily a substring, but we're given something that's even more generic, a subsequence of S. And when they say unique palindromes, basically we can't use the same one twice, even if the characters or the subsequences of the string allow it. For example, over here, we have one subsequence, A, B, A, right? The first A, then one of the Bs, and then the last A it forms this subsequence. This is a palindrome, right? But we could have gotten the same exact palindrome if we skip the first A and use the second A, B, and then the last A, we could get the same one, but we don't want to use it twice. In this case, the three, we can get three palindromes and these are the three palindromes. And you know, you can see how they form a subsequence from the given input string. So just a quick disclaimer, I'm gonna be showing you the solution, at least the best that I could come up with, which is a 26 times N time complexity solution. And the memory complexity is gonna be big O of N, where N is the size of the input string S. This is the best I could come up with. If you have something better, I would love to hear it in the comments. Definitely let me know. But so let's kind of go through some of the logic of how we can arrive at this solution that I could come up with. Maybe there's a better one out there, but this is the one I'm going to be explaining. So the good thing is that all the palindromes just need to be of length three. So even if we wanted to do a brute force solution, we don't actually have to get every single subsequence of the string S. That would be a time complexity of two to the power of N. That's how many subsequences we can get. But if we want to get every subsequence of length three, we just need three nested loops, right? So the time complexity for that is going to be... Uh, oh, big O of N to the power of three. How could we do it with three nested loops? Well, basically we'd go through every single, one pointer would just be every single character, right? So we'd have one pointer, you know, starting at the beginning, going through every single position. We'd have a second pointer that would always come after the first pointer and that would go through every position as well. And we'd have a third pointer that would come after the first two pointers and would go through every position as well. So it'd just be a standard uh, triple nested for loops, just going through every single character of this. And then for, for each iteration, we would check, okay, you know, let's say this is the palindrome that we're currently looking at or the subsequence that we're currently looking at, then we'd see, is this a palindrome or not? We'd add it to a hash set to make sure that we don't get duplicate palindromes. First of all, this isn't even a palindrome, so we would not add it at all. But if we did find a palindrome such as this, we would add it to a hash set to make sure we don't have duplicates. And then at the end, we would basically return the length of that hash set, which would tell us how many palindromes of length three we were able to get. And this isn't the worst solution, but we can actually do better. One thing they tell us is that all characters in the input S are going to be lowercase a to z characters, so 26 characters total. We can use that to our advantage. And we could also use the fact that this is a palindrome only of length three. Is there anything that you notice about palindromes of length three? Well, one thing I notice about palindromes of length three is the middle character could be any character, right? It could be any of the 26 characters. So it could have 26 different characters. Now, if we choose a middle character, the then the left character and the right character have to be the exact same, right? So since the left and right character have to be the exact same and the middle character could be any character, basically how many palindromes of length three are even possible if we have 26 characters available to us? It's gonna be 26 squared because we're gonna have one spot for the middle position and we're gonna have two spots for the left and right position and these left and right positions have to be the same, right? It could be A, B, C, anything, but they have to be the same. And the middle character could be independent of the left and right characters. It could be anything as well. It could be any of the 26 characters. So we have 26 squared different palindromes we can make. Now, knowing a little bit of that intuition that I just explained to you, how can we actually go about finding these palindromes without doing a triple nested loop? Well, let me show you how we can do it in big O of 26 of N. 
So I'm gonna show you the big O of 26 event solution. So we're gonna have a hash set and I'm gonna use the idea that I just showed you instead of having a hash set where we actually store the three character palindrome, I'm just gonna store a key where we have the middle character and the outside character, right? Because we know we can, the outside character is gonna be the same so we don't have to have two values for it and the middle character could be independent. So, you know, this key could have up to 26 squared possibilities. And so this is where I'm gonna put those uh, inputs. And so we're gonna have a, a string like this one and I'm going to just iterate through this once and I'm going to show you how we can do that. So I'm going to have a pointer and I'm going to call it M for mid, right? It's going to go through every single character in the input. Now, ha since M is going to be the middle of our palindrome, we can just kind of not consider the first character because it doesn't have any characters to the left. So there's no way we could uh, form a three character palindrome if this was the middle character. So let's start over here. So this is going to be our mid. In theory, how many possible different palindromes could we form where this is the middle character? Only 26, right? Because we only have 26 characters. Why? Because A is going to be the middle character, obviously, right? That's very obvious. A is going to be the middle character in this case. So the 26 comes from, well, do we have a A on the left and on the right of this middle character. If we do, that's one palindrome. Do we have a B on the left and a B on the right of this character? Et cetera, et cetera, all the way up until Z. Do we have a Z on the left and a Z on the right? And when I say, do we have this character Z on the left or right? I mean anywhere to the right or anywhere to the left, right? Because when we say subsequence, that means they don't have to be contiguous, right? So that's exactly what we're gonna do. For every middle character, we're gonna do a for loop for character in A, B, C, all the way to Z. And I'm gonna check, do we have a character, a matching character on the left and a matching character on the right? If we do, we can count this as a palindrome, a three character palindrome. If we don't, then we can't count it as a palindrome. Now, how can we check efficiently? Well, one way would be just go through, right, for let's say we're looking for A, right? Just iterate through every single character on the right, iterate through every single character on the left. If we find an A on both sides, then we can count it, right? Now, if we if we do it like this, the overall time complexity of the solution is gonna be 26 times N squared. That's not bad, that's better than N cubed, which is what we had earlier, but we can actually get this to be just 26 times N. Let me show you how. And hint, we're gonna need a hash set just like we have for our result. So we're gonna have a left hash set, which is just gonna tell us all the uh, characters, all the unique characters we have on the left side of our mid pointer. I'm gonna show you how we're actually gonna be keeping track of that in the code because I think it'll be a little bit more simple. I don't wanna overcomplicate this drawing. So that's what we're gonna use to keep track of what characters on the left. If we have a hash set like this, then for every time we get to a middle character like this, then we can check in O of one time for each character, A, B, C, etc. if we have that type of character that we're looking for on the left side of our middle character. We can also do the same for the right side, but we're going to use a hash map for that. I'll show you why exactly we're going to do that in the code. But the main thing is as we, as we move our mid pointer uh, over and over, we're going to be removing characters from our right hash map. And we want to be able to count how many of each character is in the hash map so far, because then once we, let's say remove an A, remove an A, re once we remove the third A, then we know we don't have any A's left in our hash map. So then we can actually pop that A from our hash map. But so that's basically the intuition, right? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be using these data structures to get the time complexity to be linear. And like I said, there might be a better solution. If there is, definitely let me know, but this is the best I could come up with. So that's gonna be the idea. We're just gonna iterate through this entire string once with a mid pointer and uh, check left and right instantly with these data structures. That being said, we can dive into the code now. Let's get into the code now. I already wrote a little bit of the things that I was explaining, and I'll be honest, the code isn't gonna be as clean as I would like. If you have a way to clean it up, definitely let me know in the comments. But like I said, we're gonna have a result hash set where the key is just gonna be the middle character and the outer character. We could have uh, up, up to 26 squared different three length palindromes. We'll have a hash set for the left, and we'll have a hash map for the right. The way I'm initializing this right hash map is just taking the entire string S and saying for every single character, count how many occurrences we have. 
So next, we're going to get into the actual logic. We're going to have our pointer I. I called it mid or M in the drawing picture, but let's just call it I. So it's going to go through every single position of the string. Technically, I could skip the first position in the string. I could just go from 1 to length S, but it works out in both cases, so that's why I'm just going to leave it like this. So every character, every time we get to a character, it's going to be our middle character, right? So if this character is going to be our middle character, that means it's no longer part of the right portion. So what we're going to do is we're going to say right of this new character that we just reached, S of I, decrement the count by one. If the count has now reached zero, we can actually remove it from the right hash map. So then we can say right dot pop this character that we just removed or decremented, right? So we're, we're going to be constantly maintaining what are all the characters to the right of this middle character that we're currently at. So now we have our middle character S of I. So now we want to go through for J in range 26 because we want to go through all 26 possible characters from A to Z. Now, how can we get the character? Well, in Python, at least, this is kind of the way to do it. So we're going to take ord of the lowercase a, add to it, the pointer j and then convert it back into a character so it's just doing a little bit of ascii math on this you can probably do it in your language of choice so we're just getting the 26 characters from a to z and remember what was our condition that we're going to check if this character is in the left hash set and if C is in the right hash map so it has to be in the left and it has to be in the right and it has to be unique now, how do we know if it's going to be unique? Well, our hash set, our result hash set is going to take care of that by our, by itself, right? So we're just going to say, okay, result dot add uh, this, the middle character, which is S of I, the outer character, which is C. So we're just going to take this pair and add it to our result. If it happens to be a duplicate, the hash set will handle that. It'll, it, it'll make sure not to add any duplicates to that hash set. So, so this is really all we need to do. This will make sure we don't count duplicates, and this will make sure we count all three length palindromes. So that was the second loop that we needed, even though we have nested loops. This is 26 times n, so it's linear time. Now, after we're done with this, the last thing you don't want to forget to do is, since we just finished this middle character, it's now going to be a part of the left portion. So before we continue to the next iteration of the loop, we want to say left.add s of i, because we could be introducing this new character to the left portion of the string. And so that's really it. So once we're done with that, we can just return length of the result. Result is going to be that hash set. And uh, the length of it will tell us how many unique palindromes, three length palindromes, we were able to add. So this is about as good as I was able to get the code. I can't wait to see how some smarter people than me were able to finish it. So here, if I scroll down, you can see proof that I was able to get this accepted. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.